we are at uh, Salam Zerker's 11 Women of Spirit, curated by Gwena Lee Zerker. And uh, this is a show of 11 women artists, and we're all different. I want to make it clear at the start, I'm not speaking for the artists or on behalf of them. I'm speaking as best I can about their work as I see it. So we're going to do a little walkthrough here, and I'll say a few words about each of the artists. And we're starting with Anne de Villeneuve's work. She's the only outright sculptor in the show. She's um, got uh, something that immediately makes me think of Giacometti, but then because of the materials and because, uh, which are a mix of things like concrete and wire um, and nails, um, it makes me, and, and then the second thing you notice right away, of course, is that they're women, but they're women who are kind of universal in, rather than specific, they're not specific uh, in terms of any era or any race or any culture. So they're kind of universal women in a certain way. And um, I think there's uh, something to be said for taking Giacometti and, if I could say so, updating him. So uh, that's uh, Anne's work. And uh, then over here, we have Betsy Weiss's work. Um, Betsy is a photographer, and her oeuvre generally has been landscapes. But with COVID, she was driven inside and uh, began to look just out her window and into the courtyard and capture nature, which uh, she usually had done in large vistas, in these very intimate uh, photographs, which are muted, uh, grays, and rather than strong black and white contrast, and are delicate and uh, lovingly reveal the intricacies of just the littlest leaves fragilely hanging there uh, in a courtyard in New York City. So they're um, a very lovely expression of, of her work uh, overall. These are my paintings, and I can say very simply that I've been influenced by the uh, early modernists in particular, like Juan Lee and Stuart Davis, but I also like cartoons, and I bring a little of uh, the comics into my, comic forms into my work. So some of what I'm very interested in has been actually in particular, Amy Bushmore's Nancy. And now we're moving to Angela Valeria. And Angela is, um, right away, uh, you know, evokes a kind of surrealist vision, like the clashing of things that you don't ordinarily see. But she's very hot. So by that I mean the color and the, the uh, uh, imagery is expressed in this expressionist, uh, really wild kind of way, like the, the fish's tail is, is not a surrealist kind of move. But the imagery of that clashing dreamlike world where these things couldn't go together, are together, is, is mindful of uh, surrealism. This pic painting in particular, I thought was a kind of interesting painting, being especially in the spirit of this show, because it's kind of saying a man can be very nice to a dog too, you know? And uh, the look on his face, I think, reinforces that. But they're very hot and expressionist paintings with a surrealist understanding that there are things lurking underneath the surface that express us as much as what's on the surface. This is Kathy Diamond's work. And Kathy uh, is very interested in light and color that, especially as it changes with the seasons. So uh, she's got a real uh, concern that she can make these things show a different idea about, about how nature expresses itself with the change of seasons. I think also for me, it's very interesting to see how she paints the paintings, because they're, they're very freshly done and they're so attentive to detail, and yet she's, you know, they're really writ large, and she obviously kind of wipes out some of the painting to create new uh, backgrounds for other parts of the painting. And that's done in a very attentive way so that you can see what's underneath, but it forms a new ground for things. So it's part landscape and part up close with the flowers. This artist is Gwyneth Leach, and she has a career of painting construction sites up, uh, that go up high uh, in the city. And with COVID, um, she switched her point of view to what was down on the sidewalks, in particular these um, homeless people's dwellings that are self-made, self-built, and really reflect those who are left out in our society. I think when she juxtaposes the homeless shelters with the construction sites, many of which were paused during COVID, you really get the feel of, 
of that sociological impact, but she's also painting in the way a painter paints them. And so this one painting here that's on the lower left with the red swash really grabbed my attention because there's the actual figure on the right who's living in there, and he put together that home in a very particular way. So it may be a hovel, but it's his hovel, and you can really feel that in that painting. And over here we have Dee Shapiro, and uh, if you know, Dee Sh if you know uh, your art history a little bit, you recognize the reference to uh, Henri Rousseau's uh, dream. And, uh, but Dee Shapiro has uh, appropriated it, but in a loving way. It's not making fun of it, it's not being ironic toward it, it's uh, the opposite, it's taking the uh, tropes of the painting, if you will, that's a fancy word, to saying just the elements of the painting and reconstituting them in her own way, collage, sparkle, glitter, um, decorative elements that you know enhance or add to Rousseau's jungle vision. And one of the things I really love is this lion, tiger, I'm sorry, I don't know my beasts, but in Rousseau's painting, he's staring out at us, and in this painting, he's got a very wary look on his face. He's looking at her, I think, um, and she's kind of looking back at him. And uh, so it's a wonderful painting to look at, and uh, I've enjoyed it. Over here, we have Margaret Jolly, and her um, entire career has been uh, focused on, and you know it just right away coming to these paintings, um, the pollution of plastic on the planet. So at first glance, I just look and see these lovely floating forms that are overlapping and coming together and forming new forms. And I see now when I look at her website and read her statement that actually they are related to that general interest in uh, plastic pollution because these are the way these things sort of come together, uh, plastic molecules, they never degrade, they come together and overlap and join together. And I think the paintings uh, are a visual kind of expression of all of that. Um, but you know, they're very beautiful and just floating uh, shapes that are coming together. So that's what I see there. Nicole Parcher's work in this show is two pieces. She's actually um, practices in three media. She does drawings, oil paintings, and installation pieces. This is an installation piece from before COVID. And it's, um, uh, you know, it's a kind of birthday, I for, I'm sorry, I, I don't know the exact title, I forget it now, but it's a, about a birthday, but a birthday celebration. You can see that, there are the balloons, the birthday uh, stuff is there, but then you start to ponder where's all this stuff coming from? It comes from 99 cent stores. And uh, then there's the ominous side to it, which is one, of course, all the stuff we have in the world, and that's part of it, but those caution marks kind of get to me, because there they are. There's a birthday, but you know, birthdays are have a sort of dark underbelly to them also. Um, then we go to this painting here, which is, you know, she's very interested in just the spontaneous mark, and she's very interested in the line moving around the painting and just meandering on its own pace, and they're not deliberate, they're felt and done in the moment, and then the juxtaposition of the two sized canvases jolts you a little into seeing uh, maybe more than if it were just one painting. Uh, this is Susan B's work, and um, I'll say up front that I learned a lot about her work by reading Fong Gui's interview with her in 2017 in the Brooklyn Rail, and I urge anyone interested in her work more to read that marvelous interview. But she's um, on record saying in that interview that she's actually more interested in, in primitive art than in modern art, but obviously there's some modern art in her pictures too. Maybe the fact that modernism and uh, folk art, as Jigna said, primitive art, folk art and modernism overlap in so many res regards, so many respects, it helps explain her attraction. So Matisse and the still life comes out as much as just the folk art flatness. Um, but she's also got decorative impulses, and there they are for, on full display. And this artist, here, Lucero uh, Gonzalez Jameson is uh, very interested in the um, the anxiety of the human condition, and that's a big, big thing to be interested in. But it comes out in her painting in the way she 
tries to show the ephemeral quality of our existence. So although there are figures in here, and I think you can suss them out visually, they're not explained in any great detail visually. So they're suggested, and I think that that passing quality, that they're, you're here today and gone tomorrow, comes out of them. And the ephemera in the little paintings is the same, uh, the same thing. They're, they're little flowers, uh, but they're here and they're barely here. At the same time, I think there's um, a joyful quality to her paintings because of the way they uh, bring just the color uh, is very beautiful. And I just want to say in the end that this is a very colorful show, and it's a marvelous thing to have such color and joy after more than a year of COVID. Thank you, Gwendolyn. Thank you, Laurie.